tell us what got you into cooking, making food and making vegan and vegetarian food. When uh, my, uh, my elder daughter, she was 20 years now, when she was born in 2004, we came to know that she has a milk allergy. Coming from an Indian family and having a child who is allergic to milk as well as all the milk products, it was like, if not milk, then what? And then the vegan term came into our life. I believe that best opportunities are created in a crisis. My brand name is Nevedyam, mm -hmm. and Nevedyam is a Sanskrit word. It means food offering to God. Any insights or observations that you can share with us, I would, I would appreciate. There's a very high demand of vegan food these days. People have become very conscious about what they eat. Earlier, we used to see that uh, even in the seafood restaurants, there was no vegetarian food, but now they also have added vegetarian food. What, what is it that you that makes you keep cooking? It's a therapy. Getting hungry here now. Welcome back to the plant-based podcast, Asia your place to inspire, educate, and connect. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm really, really happy to welcome you back to the podcast today in the new podcast studio. And I'm very excited to introduce you, Chef Shraddha. She's the founder of Nevedium. Um, came the way all up here from Bangkok. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. This is the first episode that we are doing here in this uh, new podcast studio. So uh, welcome to be our first honored guest. And um, so you're a chef. You specialize in um, Indian food. That's where you're originally from, right? Um, and you're doing caterings and pop-up stores. Now you mentioned you just had a chef's table at the very prestige um, location here in Chiang Mai. It's amazing what you're doing and we're really looking forward to listen and hear from you. Can you maybe start by sharing about your story? I'm really curious to know like how you came here to Thailand in the first place because as, as for me also there was a point in my life where I moved here so it was for you right? Maybe you can start by that point and then tell us what got you into cooking, making food and making vegan and vegetarian food. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting you, me. And uh, I would like to share that we came to Thailand in 1997. My husband, he came from India, and he's working with the company, Indian company here. And so I moved in with him here in 1998. The sky train was not there. It was still under construction. It was that in 1998. And we moved here from India and um, we came here with like two suitcases, having no idea that we will be staying that long. Wow. Yeah, we came here with two suitcases and thought that, it's, oh, it's going to be a two years contract and we're going to go back mm -hmm. to India. But it's been 27 years now mm -hmm. and I have my family here mm -hmm. and uh, I have two daughters. Uh, one, The elder one is 20 years, the younger one is 60. Mm -hmm. And uh, since... Uh, since childhood, I had this fascination about cooking. I used to see my parents, my father and mother, both cooking in the kitchen. And the dish that you take the raw veggies in the kitchen and they come out, when they come out, they were like full of flavors. Mm. And uh, I always enjoy watching them cooking and was always curious. At, oh, such an amazing thing that, you know, the raw thing goes in and they come out very nutritious. How cool is that? The magic happens in the kitchen. Right. Uh -huh. And then uh, both my father and my mother always encouraged me. And they also used to tell me that, oh, you know, you add this ingredient in this and you don't add in that. So I always used to question why. And there's a science behind to deliver you are cooking a dish and the kind of ingredients that you're adding. So I'm not a certified chef, but whatever little I have learned is from my parents. My parent, my mother, Mirla, and my father, Mr. Vinay. So they are my teachers. And I have done a very good uh, education from a worldwide university called YouTube University. Mm -hmm. I've gone on my, I've, I've taken all my knowledge from YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
and as well as whenever i meet people they share about you know the kind of food and i always believe that food always is like a conversation starter it always connects people uh, so it's all amazing and when um, my uh, my elder daughter she was 20 years now when she was born in 2004 uh we came to know that she has a milk allergy she's highly highly milk allergic to milk and as well as all the milk products so coming from an indian family and having a child who is allergic to milk as well as all the milk products it was like if not milk then what because milk is such an important thing uh for indian people right and the cow is the the ho- a holy animal right Uh-huh. It is very important part because the desserts and everything our cuisine moves around ghee and uh, all the milk and butter milk. Then what did you do about that? You found out your daughter has this milk allergy. So uh, uh, once accidentally I fed her milk uh, while she was four months. So I accidentally fed her milk and she has this. reaction her whole body turned blackish red oh, wow and uh, when i took her like this and pat her she immediately vomited mm-hmm. and after she vomited her whole body came back to normal we rushed to the hospital and we found out that she's allergic to milk and other milk products and then the vegan till came into our life wow before that it was only vegetarian wow. and non vegetarian So then we came to know that there is a term called as vegan where you cannot have milk or any byproduct of animal. And since then we were all very tense that how are we going to uh grow up this shiny who is blessed with this thing. So uh we thought that okay we need to change our mindset and then uh I did all the studies on the from internet that what is vegan what are the food that she needs to avoid and i found out that most of the things are vegan so that was 20 years ago right wow that is 20 years ago sure. yeah so i found out most of the things are vegan you add only on top of it like we in india we add ghee on top or maybe we just need it so even if we don't add inside there's not much of a difference you can, there are substitute for eat and everything so I did my research and my child because of my child I did a lot of studies that you know if she wants cheesecake I used to make a cheesecake made from cashew nuts mm-hmm. and if she wants something puff pastry I used to make puff pastry with coconut oil and some sheets of course the consistency was not that good but then that that food was for her and back in 2004 it was the the vegan food was not that popular yeah yeah it was only vegetarian and that too very limited vegetarian food there were only four or five dishes that i can count on my fingers there were available in vegetarian and thai dishes and we used to roam around that okay whenever we used to go out we just used to order those dishes because we don't want to have any contamination so that she will have otherwise she will have a reaction wow yeah that is a very uh, powerful start because it it's kind of you know starts from your family from your blood from like okay you need to find a solution for a for a problem or for uh, something that is going on and then you create your way and you so you learned how to veganize all these all these dishes and then um so you cooked for your family all the time already but then when was that you started to think like hey uh, you can kind of commercialize that and start to do that professionally Yeah so I always enjoy cooking for my family and my friends and they always you say should I open a restaurant <laughs> Yes that's going to happen so but I was I wasn't taking very seriously and um what I used to do is when my child was started going to school I have to give her lunch box because she cannot have outside food because we cannot uh, make sure that it's not cross contamination even the spoon from here to there right create a big reaction to her because if she will touch the milk her whole hand will get red if she by mistake consume we have to rush to the emergency it was that sensitive so i used to give her different boxes 
and everybody used to be fascinated what's there in her Tiffin box. So after when in 2018, uh, I did a small workshop with the children in the school, which was vegan. So plan, it was a completely plant based. So the teachers, they, they loved the food and they said that, could you please um, make lunches for us? So I said, okay, fine, I'll do that. And then I was doing it uh, on a very small scale, like two or three person, they order something or the other. And then after that, COVID hit. So when COVID hit, everything was shut down. And uh, then they requested me if, they, if I can provide food for them. So I was living in Rayong that time. And uh, the teachers and the expat community over there, they included me in one of their groups. So I used to provide food to them. Wow. It started with like once in a week. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing it four times a week. Wow. So, and then it was doing very well over there. But in 2022, my daughter, the elder, uh, the younger one, she decided to change her school from uh, Re uh, from Rayong to Bangkok. We moved here in Bangkok, mm -hmm. and for her further studies and for further exposure. Nice. So I did my research over here, and then I was uh, thinking that okay, let's do it something here in Bangkok as well. Wow, that's that's amazing, very very impressive, and also the fact that. The COVID was kind of a starting point because it's very interesting. Um, you're not the first person that tells me on this show that like, oh, you know, during COVID, something, they got some new idea or some, finally they have some time to try something different, right? So, you know, on one hand, it was a very challenging time for the whole world, but then there were so many new things born during that time, including including your um, catering business and, um, you know, supplying uh, you know, lunches and food to like schools and so on. Yes. I believe that best opportunities are created in the crisis. Yeah. I see. You, you need to see that, you know, okay, if this is a crisis, yeah, because I have heard so many stories that so many people came out in COVID yeah. during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bad phase, but it was, it was a, a, a new wave in itself for many of the people. I'm not trained anywhere. I'm not professionally certified or anything. But then uh, people tell me that they love my food and I have skills in the in, in making the flavors. So why not? I just started on a very small, uh, small, very small scale. Even if now it's very small, it's not very big as of now. But, but, but I think this is the amazing point and I, that's what I like about what you're doing and what other people are doing because um, sure, we can study a subject for 10 or 20 years up here, but then if it not comes from here, right? And from the real hands-on experience, then it's not going to work or it's not going to taste or it's not going to be how it should be. So, I mean, it's same for us. I'm not a professional cheese maker, right? I've not, not studied the art of making cheese, but then I want to eat vegan cheese because I love cheese. But I eat plant-based, so, you know, it's similar to, to your story. Like, okay, let's, we have this, uh, this situation, let's create a solution for it. Right? Great, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing with uh, Navy Diam, and maybe first you can explain also the name of, your, uh, of this company uh, um, that you founded, and, and tell us what you're, what you're doing apart from uh, caterings, because I think you've do, you're doing like pop-up stores, so... You can share a little bit about this also. And I've seen you've been also uh, uh, recognized for your culinary contributions and like uh, uh, Woman TV and Root the Future Awards and so on. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so my brand name is Nevedyam mm -hmm. and Nevedyam is a Sanskrit word. It means food offering to God. Wow. So when you offer to God anything, it has to be in the most cleanest form. It has, to, it has to be in the most uh, served with most purest intentions. Mm -hmm. So that is what we do in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. We means I. So that's what I do in my kitchen. So it's the food is purely prepared with love, and that is the tagline of my brand. The secret ingredient is always love. Mm -hmm. I don't go by measure. One spoon of this, one spoon of. 
I just go by my fingers and I just go by my, okay, this is need to be added. I mean, I do like to cook, but obviously I, I'm not considering myself a chef or I don't have that chef heart or mindset. But I would like to hear from you, is, is cooking sort of like a meditation also? Because I, I've heard that from other people, it's like a, like a meditation or, or how... Or how do you feel when, when you cook? What, what is it that, you, that makes you keep cooking? It's a therapy. It's a therapy. Even. It's a therapy. I don't know about meditation, but it's a therapy. So ever if you, and whenever you are in the kitchen and you are cooking, it's like you indulge yourself when you are cooking. And you, you leave the world outside. You are solely involved in whatever you're cooking. It's a complete therapy for me. I feel so happy when I cook and I feel much more happier when I give the food to my customer, especially on when I go for live events. I cook the food in front of them and I give it to them and the smile that they, on the first bite, my life is sorted, my day is sorted for that day. Because I always believe and I always remember my parents' words that when you are cooking food and when you are giving it to somebody else, you're giving prana to that person, which means life to right. that person. That person will eat and it will rejuvenate again, energize again. So you need to give the person food with pure intentions. Mm -hmm. Of course, I charge them because I need to pay my bills. <laughs> but yeah. And I, I'm sure they are happily to pay for it because if um, you know they receive this prana or this good energy, this nutritious food, you know, then I guess people are willing to, to pay. In this journey, I've met the best of the best people, wow. sweetest people, very nice people. I am so blessed that the people that I'm surrounded with, they always encourage me. Sometimes I'm not very, uh, I'm not a business oriented. So I cannot be like, you know, uh, sometimes I do make mistakes. But then they are always supportive. So it's, it's okay. Next time, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that in that way, I'm just thankful to all my customers or all of other people I'm surrounded with. Wonderful. Wow. And now I'm just thinking I've never tried your food. So um, um, if I'm in Bangkok, is there a way to like order through you? Do you have like a, I don't know, a weekly menu that people can order or you're only doing like caterings and um, pop-up stores or you have like a like a little shop in front of your house or something or you're planning on doing that no so uh it's a pre-order delivery only because nevedian is based on a sustainable concept no food wasted so when uh it's and it's a pre-order delivery because uh on every friday night i take out that okay we are ready to take the orders and by sunday evening I know whom do I have to cook and whom do I have to deliver. Wow. The kitchen timings are from uh, uh, Tuesday until Friday. Saturday, Sunday, I do for pop-ups and I do for like socializing, networking. And Monday, I take it for myself, rest and do the deep cleaning for the kitchen. Okay. So if ever somebody is in Bangkok, then they want to order. It's a pre-order. So at least one day before. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on Grab, not on any app. It's like a direct message. Wow. Just drop me a message that Shraddha, I would like to have a food. Can you send me the menu? I will happily do that. Wow. And just let me know what day, what time you want and what cuisine you want. Mm -hmm. I will send it to you. What cuisine you want? Because I, I see that you're also doing like other cuisines, like a Mexican and Mediterranean. Is, is that so? Yes. Wow. So I'm an Indian and I specialize in Indian food. But I also do Mexican and Mediterranean food because they are the flavor palette is a little same. Okay. Mexican food and Indian spices goes together very well. I don't say that it's an authentic Mexican food because I'm not a Mexican and I'm not from Mexico. But uh, the the vegan dishes and the sauces that I put was very well with Mexican and Mediterranean dishes. I see. What are some of the special dishes that I have to try or other? customers need to try what would you say is like your your best seller or your so uh if i'm on line station then you must try masala dosa set from indian cuisine mm -hmm. yeah 
Masala Dosa set is like a best seller. And uh, in Bangkok, people now, Thai people and uh, the other people, they started calling me Dosa Lady. <laughs> Miss Dosa. Because they always find me making dosa. Uh, and they're like, ah, okay, dosa, even the kids. Because dosa is a thing that anybody can have it. Like vegans can have dosa. Gluten, it's gluten free. So the people who are looking for gluten free, they can have dosa. And dosa is a thing that it you can have it in the breakfast time, lunch or dinner. You don't need to think about it. And it is the most healthiest uh, dish that I can say. Because the dosa is a crepe, it's made with fermented rice and lentil batter, which is good for your gut. Okay, and the sour is like a lentil and vegetable curry kind of thing, curry soup you can say. So when you are eating that dosa, you don't need to think about oh where is my um, where is my protein, where is my carbs, because in the dosa you have uh, the crepe, your protein is salt. And inside you have potato stuffing, your carbs are salt. In the curry, you have lentils, which are high in protein. So that even that is salt. It's filled with vegetables, so your fiber is salt. Wow. It is served with two or three different kind of chutneys. And a special soup, we call it is rasam. It's a spicy pepper garlic soup, which was which was very helpful during COVID time. So it, it helps your uh, soothe your throat and it's very beneficial for your health. Getting hungry here now. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm curious also to know is about the the change in terms of because I mean I like to study the plant based market and the vegan market and the, the the consumer behavior. Like how is it changing? What is going on? So over the last few years since you've been doing that, did you analyze or observe any like uh, increase in people interested in like vegan or vegetarian food and also who are your are your main customers like Thai people or like foreigners or Indians and any insights or observations that you can share with us I, I would appreciate there's a very high demand of vegan food these days people have become very conscious about what they eat uh, and they uh, demand vegan food a lot there are a lot of, lot of vegan options open in Bangkok Uh, vegan stores open in Bangkok, vegan restaurants and cloud kitchens that are open in Bangkok. So there is a high demand of uh, vegan food right now. Uh, having said that, there is a debate between vegan and plant-based sometimes, which just confuses people as well. So it, the thing is very simple. Plant-based should be like from plant. And vegan is like no animal product. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to say that don't make things very complicated. If food needs to be simple, wholesome, nutritious, that's it. So there is a demand of vegan food and as well as the chain changes going on. Earlier, we used to see that uh, even in the seafood restaurants, there was no vegetarian food. But now they also have added vegetarian food. Level up, they are good. They have also added vegan food as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm observing something similar, but it's it's also great to hear that from you that there is like a, a growing demand. Yes, right. Okay. Um, to wrap up the episode a little bit for today, I would like to hear and understand more about your vision. Um, it's always a question that I like to ask on this podcast. Like, what do you like to see in the next upcoming years, five years, 10 years? 30 years um, for you personally, for your brand, for the world, up to you. What do you would like to share? Uh, personally, I don't uh, plan things. So I don't think what, I don't know what's going to happen next five years. But I really, my vision is I want to have uh, a small, if not, not a small, like I want to see Levy Dips food in airlines at airports vegan food because the, uh, when we go for travel and we, we do the reservation and the kind of food that we get on flight in vegan it's not that interesting so uh, I want to I want to tell the people that you can add flavors you can as well as you can add the more nutrition 
in your uh, airlines uh, food so my vision is i want my food to be served in airlines yeah <laughs> that's my vision all the airline customers or the airline owners listening today please add some more flavor to your food i i agree i mean i also always uh, pre-booked the uh, the um the vegan option on the plane and then yes sometimes uh you know i'm happy I, i get food i get food that i can eat but i think i agree and probably not just for the vegan option but i guess in general the the food on on planes is often maybe a little plain so that's an amazing vision um do you have any words to close the episode today anything that you would like to share with the audience um anything inspiring inspiring my tagline is just do it Mm-hmm. that's what I believe in that we just if you have any idea or if you want to do something don't waste time you just do it because once you are in that zone you will find the opportunities to do it I don't enter in anything with planning that's and my husband is totally up opposite mm-hmm. he, he knows everything needs to be planned and I'm like I don't understand what planning is I still don't go according to plan at all. Wow, but that's interesting that then still you were able to set up such a Let's go by day by day. I just it just every day I wake up and I say okay, to, this is to-do list. This is the what that I'm going to do for today. These are the appointments for the next days. Okay, fine. But for today, today is the day. Seize the day. Just do it. I love that Chef Shrada, thank you so much for for joining us here in Chiang Mai in our studio. So it's, it's a real pleasure. And then to all the audience listening today, I hope you enjoyed the show for the ones in Bangkok. Please go check her out. Maybe you can share your um where can people actually check out your uh, or contact you is it through Instagram or Facebook? I'm available on Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. My Instagram page name is Nidhi Diam Young for Tum. That means yummy for your tummy. We put that in the description below. So definitely go try her food. Um, it sounds delicious. It looks delicious. And next time when I'm in Bangkok, I'm going to taste it. I'm sure it's going to be very great. Yes. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank I am because I cook. And I am here because I have a very support, strong supportive system. Back home, my younger daughter. Ananya and my husband, Ajay. Yeah, I'm very, very thankful to them as well because they always support me. They let me free. Uh, I don't, uh, my daughter, she's very supportive. She never says that, oh, I want you at home. She's like, go explore, do your work. Wow. That's that's great. And it's, it's important to have a supportive, uh, you know, family and surrounding. Great to hear that. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like this episode. You put your comment below and of course share it with your friends if they are inspired by Indian food or what Chef Shrada is doing. I'm your host Nick and this is the Plant-Based Podcast Asia. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.